Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tip Off. Sorry, it's off a little bit this morning. I had to get the kids ready for the holiday play, and for that reason, actually, I will not be at jazz practice uh, today. I got the, the the first and fourth grade holiday show. Nothing better. The things that parents do, right? Okay, you're with me. I mean, I'm all supportive and everything, but yeah, there's better ways to spend a few hours. How's everybody? Uh, I apologize for those of you watching on YouTube. There's a little glare behind me. Um, it's it's called the sun, and um, since it exists for part of today, and I can see blue sky, and if you're down in the gawk, uh, if you're in Utah County or somewhere like that, I guess you don't have it, but if you're down in the gawk, I thought it'd be nice for a little glare because it'd remind you of the sun. Uh, all right, bunch of stuff. Josh Howard signs. I, I want to touch on one or two things. I don't want to delay this too much, but I want to touch on one or two things first. One, I'm building the entire season plan right now. Uh, of how we're using Facebook, how we're using Twitter, what videos I'm doing, what we're, Ron and I are doing in the broadcast. Uh, I am totally open to suggestions. You can email me at dlock at utahjazz.com. There's an E on the end of lock, uh, or however you want to do it. So if you have thoughts, if there's things we've done in the past that you loved, you want again, you want different versions, um, let me know. Uh, I'm going to try to do multiple podcasts a week. One's going to be PKI. One's going to be Harpering trying to figure out whether you want national people or what you want on the other ones, so please feel free. Thanks to everybody who came out to Level 9 Sports. The Ode to the Snow Gods hasn't quite worked yet, but hopefully it's revving up. Um, and they are continuing that again today. So if you bring by uh, any old stuff for their wall, we had some great old if you're an old skier, the Razi S uh, Kevlar series and the Dina Starcourse GS series. They were great to have come by. Uh, I was all fired up about the Dina Star uh, with the red bu gold ski with the red bubble on top. Uh, so anyway, uh, they're still doing that today, and then you get an extra 10 to 20 percent off on, and they're donating your old equipment. So if you have old equipment going around, go ahead. They'll donate or they'll put up on the wall, and then you get an extra discount. So that's that's super cool. We're live today, at Katrubus Motors at Volkswagen, and there are all sorts of fun ticket packages available for the Jazz. But let's get down to it. Josh Howard. Why is it a good move, and what's it worth? So the reason on why is because the Jazz only have four wings right now, and Gordon Hayward, C.J. Miles, Alec Burks, and Raja Bell. The likelihood in a 66-game schedule, those are the guys that are going to get hurt the most in this truncated schedule. They're doing the most running. They have the most issues. Raja's 35. Burks is 20, and has a real chance that he could be, you know, fish out of water for a while. If either of those go down and Burks were to not be ready or Burks were to need some more time, you need another player. Uh, Paul Carter and some of these other guys uh, are okay, but you, you got to be really careful in this shortened season that you suddenly go rely on one of those guys – those young players or an inexperienced third point guard, if one of your points go down or one of your wings go down, instead of a regular time where for five games you're missing, they miss 10 days, that tends out to be three, four games. Your other guy plays 35 minutes, they play 10, you, you need 40 minutes out of them. You can sneak by on that. But in this schedule, you go miss 10 games or 10 days, that's six games, and you're not your backups aren't playing 35 a night anymore because of the fact that you're playing six games in 10 days, and therefore you end up with this fifth guy ending up having to play 100-some-odd like minutes over that 10 days. And so having someone like Josh Howard is pretty valuable. Uh, the Jazz checked him out. with So so there's why. You had to have a fifth s small forward I don't, I don't know who else is out there. I'm not a big Travis Outlaw guy. Uh, he's really clutch late, and he was unbelievable for with Brandon Roy. Uh, and he was Brandon Roy's, you know, right-hand man. And somehow, since, you know, when Roy suddenly had the knees, Trevor, Travis wasn't as good. Um, I look around, at, you know, Boston Knockbar is, I believe, still out there. Uh, I like him. I don't know if I like him more than Josh Howard. He certainly was never as good. Uh, but after that, most of the guys I'm interested in, Mike Dunleavy, Luke and Bob Mute, uh, they're all gone, and you, or you couldn't have gotten them. Uh, Dunleavy's still a guy that would have intrigued me, but he probably needs more time. Than, uh, and right now the Jazz got a one-year contract. I, I'm actually surprised it's only a one-year contract. I get why it's a one-year contract because, hey, if something goes wrong, but on the other end, if something goes right, you got to pay him next year. Uh, maybe he ends up being uh, loyal to you for what he was able to – um, 
that you gave him the break. But if you if you believe that he is going to do it, I wonder if you get him a two year contract. Now he might not take the money. There's there's all sorts of items in that part. So so that's the and who's Josh Allen? Well, he's tough. Um, I think he's going to be pretty resilient. I you know for all the talk about him being in trouble, some of it's probably real. Some of it I I think we have to take ourselves and get out of our image of what we think is trouble versus what is reality. Um, he did some silly things along the way, but he, he's playing for his life. And Kevin's a big believer that if, if he has somebody who's playing for his life uh, in the NBA, that you probably get a little more out of him. Josh Howard really can't afford to be a problem. If he's a problem here, he's done. And there's a real value to that uh, in trying to get something. He's a very good rebounder for the position when he was good. He was a good defender. The Dallas coaches always wanted a little bit more out of him because he was such a good athlete. Uh, he went to the line, average amounts, not great. He's not a particular. I wrote this up. He's not a particularly efficient offensive player. He's, truthfully, even at his best, he was not one of the guys that, for what I like out of players, in my numeric system, that I love, okay? I like guys that use possessions well, um, that are highly efficient, uh, and I believe, and I, but I do like the fact he could get his shot off. And I like guys who shoot to three and go to the free throw line. That's my magic combination because if you dig into the numbers on that, uh, you shoot, most guys shoot 75% for the free throw line. That's 1.5 points per trip to the free throw line, right? Think about that 75%, two free throws, 1.5 points. If you shoot 40% from three, it's 1.2 points per three-point shot. If you shoot 50% from two, it's about one. The reality is, and I could probably try to pull this up while we're chatting, the reality is that most guys shoot that 15 to 20-footer because it's hard to get to the rim in this league, and that is a really poor shot. Um, if you look across the NBA, the average... 10 to 15 footer goes in 39% of the time, as does the 16 to 23 footer. So when you start playing this game of math, the average three point shot, if you put everyone together, the whole mass of three point shooters, the average point per three point shot, I think it's the equivalent of a 54% field goal attempt. You know, if you're over 10 feet, 10 to 23, the shot's 40%, 39%. And when you get to the rim, it's 64%. Okay, so if you get to the rim, you're better in the free throw line, as we just talked about, as a 1.5 point possession. I kind of rambled on that, but so that's why I like that. Josh Howard's not one of those guys. But I do think we need some other guys on this roster. Uh, we need some guys in case guys get hurt. Maybe more importantly, we need some guys uh, to be pushing Burks, to be pushing Hayward for their time. I suspect Gordon's going to start. I mean, I, uh, if you follow me on Twitter, at Lockdown Sports, I went back and did a bunch of work on Gordon's numbers last year. Uh, and he was really, tr really terrific from February 1st on. And I, I would be stunned if, if that doesn't earn him that starting spot. <clears throat> I would suspect Raj is the other guy. And then it's probably C.J. Miles and Josh Howard with Alec Burks earning those fifth set of minutes. But we'll see how ready... Uh, Burks is along the way. Uh, Brian Smith wrote an interesting article about Cantor and his height. I haven't noticed that. I'm, I, I don't. Um, uh, I don't have any feeling that of, that he's too short or anything of that nature. Um, and I do think there's a literally question, little literal question, but just like what is a center anymore? I don't. I don't know. Does a center have to be 6'11"? Maybe, if you're going to protect the rim. I've never thought Cantor's going to be a rim protector. I thought he was going to be a rebounder. Um, he's a little smaller than Marcus Gasol, but I think that's uh, probably the best comparison we can have is Marcus Gasol. All right, let's go to our tip-off questions. I'm going to go in reverse order. Uh, was KOC holding back when Jerry was around? Made some bold moves since uh, being a gambler. That's from Utah Jazz V4FTW. Um circumstances have allowed for Kevin O'Connor to do more stuff right now. Uh, I think that there is, um, yeah, maybe. Maybe there's a little bit of a level that he's got more of a realm now to do things that you we were all, everyone's trying to match what Jerry wanted. It was under a pretty strict 
uh, circumstance. There's definitely a new era of jazz basketball that's going on right now. That doesn't mean there was anything wrong with the bad era. It just, or excuse me, the last era, and there was nothing bad about it. Uh, it just means we have a new era going on. Is this the end of Andre Karolinko? Uh, I think so. I'm live today. Katrubus Motors doing this show. I'm, we're going to talk about this. I mean, it's a, he's a very interesting character in jazz history. He was the bridge. There have been three bridges out of the Stockton Malone era into this new era. And uh, I think we love Darren. We certainly didn't love Boozer, and we didn't know what to do with Andre. And it, it's the hangover of having the greatness of Stockton and Malone and the fact that they, they were great, and they get greater every day. Uh, I think had lim- long-term impact on Karolinko. Uh, the other thought I have on Karolinko, I'll talk about this more today, he's too much like you and I. He, he just he cared about his family, great, cares about his family a great deal. He, he just he experiences life the same way that we do. And sometimes I don't think that to be a great NBA player, uh, that you can actually do that. Uh, Jamie Lund uh, from Twitter says, what's on with hashtag lock tip off? Will size matter with the future line of Cantor uh, and favors? Um, you know, I, I'm not sure what I think of this, this whole thing. I, I'd like to just know what he measured. Um, I guess that that information was available because Brian's really thorough. Um, I, I give Brian great credit. He's he's super thorough, particularly in the sense that he doesn't follow he gets leak he doesn't follow leaks and, and go with them. He's pretty willing to work a story, have it not happen, and then uh, let it go. And I think that's really the sign in this day and age. It's so easy to just post up anything uh, on the web. So he's obviously worked the story. Um, you know, I, I I I so I don't really if he's truly six nine, yeah, it's an issue. Um, but he measured six nine and three quarters at the draft camp, so I'm not sure that that's that different. If he's really six nine shoes, so he's six seven out of shoes, and then that's an issue. But I don't know how he measured at six nine and three quarters at draft camp and suddenly shrunk between now and then. Um, and I also think there's something with young kids that they don't stand upright. I don't think he stands straight, um, and that would be part of what my thought on is why he looks like he's shorter. Uh, than anyone else. Uh, Levi West, too, sends me, I know Cantor isn't ready, but do you anticipate he and Favors being able to play side-by-side side in the future? I would think so. That's obviously why you've drafted them. Time will tell. Um, and and it's interesting. I don't think Cantor has any idea what's going on, and his head is swimming. But when he is on the floor, I think he has done well. And I think so I think there's some level where the Jazz are going to have to throw him out there a little bit more then guys like myself are taking credit. But that's hard for Ty to throw Cantor out there when you have Memo, you have Millsap, you have Jefferson, and, and you have Favors, and you want to make sure Favors gets his time. And the other guys, you know what you're going to get. And Cantor is absolutely the wild card. You have no idea uh, what you're going to get. Um, so we'll see. A bunch of people asked about Michael Red. Uh, Michael Red, I, I don't know much about it. Uh, one thing I would say is he's really more of a two than a three. Um, some people could say Josh Howard's more of a two. I think he's more of a three, but it's kind of um, – and and I think the amount of ACLs on red, I think it's over. Um, but, yes, that would have been another person that the Jazz could have played money ball with. I don't think there's any uh, question on that. I, I think those are the big issues. I've written up a bunch of stuff. I apologize. I'm not going to hit practice today because I'm, I'm hitting the kids – program uh, i hope we gave you some today today was kind of a lot more questions and the, obviously the josh howard story is the big one yesterday i had new news for you i kind of feel bad on new news uh if you're a tumblr person i've relinked up the tumblr so all the videos and everything will be on tumblr as well thumbs up have a great friday utah state aggies go 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 little bowl action that's where scotty's going today i love that he's taking his dad whole family three generations going to see the aggies i think it's fabulous talk to you guys soon